faculty and staff, family and friends, on behalf of President Bill Brennan and the entire commu MMA community, welcome to our annual gun rededication ceremony. Would our guests please rise for our national anthem? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's broad glow the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order, arms. Guests, please be seated. Regiment, power raid, rest! It is my honor now to introduce President William J. Breton. Ships, sailors, and weapons change, but traditions which can neither be bought nor sold nor created as a solid rock against shifting sands. This three inch 50 caliber naval gun used aboard World War II merchant ships and resting at Maine Maritime Academy since the early 1940s is part of MMA's history. MMA was founded in 1941 because there was a historic need to supply our merchant and naval ships with trained and qualified personnel. This manually operated 3-inch 50 was sent to MMA for the purpose of training our midshipmen to defend their ships when attacked. The gun remained operational for several years and the operations manuals are still maintained today by the Commandant staff. After the war and the need for this specific training had diminished. The gun was relegated to a spot on the Levitt lawn and became a symbol of why Maine Maritime Academy was founded. Over the years, alumni expressed a desire to have a memorial on the MMA campus for all graduates who have been lost at sea or killed in the line of duty. This gun, a tangible symbol of lives lost and why this school was founded, became that memorial. In 1996, the gun was reconditioned and moved to the current location where we stand today. The addition of the Lost at Sea Memorial Wall contributes to the importance of this installation. May we never forget the sailors who are memorialized here. This symbol will remind all who view it of our predecessors who gave their lives to their country, ships, and to their shipmates thereby making the freedoms and lifestyles we enjoy today possible. I have, thought, I have a thought for you to, to consider. Who are these young people that this symbol honors? They were once cadets, just like you. They had the same problems, thoughts, hopes, dreams, dislikes, and even sweated their exams too. They certainly didn't want their lives shortened. These people are us, and we are them. In years to come, inevitably more names will be added to this list. Some of us may even have our names recalled at future ceremonies and families will gather together to remember. We are here today with an obligation to preserve the memories 
of those graduates and acknowledge their service and their sacrifice. We are here today to acknowledge the core values of honor, loyalty, and devotion to duty by which they live their lives. And the inscription on the memorial reads, in memory of those graduates who gave their lives while serving their country or who were lost at sea, may their sacrifice never be forgotten. When planning this memorial, the alumni were concerned as to how to ensure that this memorial becomes hallowed ground for future classes. We do not share that concern because we have faith in today's regiment and future regiments and the fact that they will honor those who have come before them and those who will come after. Thank you for joining me today. I now turn the proceedings over to Commandant John Cashman for the charge of responsibility. Captain. Regiment, attend. Hut. Class of 2025, the classes before you, including the representative members of the class of 2022 here as part of the wedge and the ship rates, as well as the class of 2023 and 2024 that stand amongst you, were previously charged with the responsibility of ensuring that this memorial remains a very special place on our campus. That responsibility is now being passed to you as representatives of Maine Maritime Academy's class of 2025. I now charge you to carry on the tradition and bear the solemn responsibility to guard, preserve, and protect this memorial so that it may continue to be passed from one regimental class to the next for as long as Maine Maritime Academy is in existence. So class of 2025, do you accept this responsibility? Yes, Outstanding. Thank you. The responsibility is now in your hands and you have the trust and the support of the entire MMA community and alumni. Regiment, parade, rest. I now introduce Midshipman First Class John Watt, the Regimental Commander. I will now read the list of those killed in the line of duty or lost at sea. I will read their names and their class years. William H. McReel, 1943, TAC 1. Warren C. Johnston. 1943 TAC 1. Donald E. Ritchie, 1943 TAC 1. James W. Harding, 1943 TAC 2. Sewell B. Smith, Jr., 1943 TAC 2. Darwin A. Dibble, 1943 TAC 2.
William B. Hunt, 1974. Riza M. Kusha, 1975. Stephen R. Patras, 1975. Galen W. Howes, 1976. Kevin C. Murray, 1977. Abbas Dabar Elat, 1978. Mark S. Henthorne, 1978. Harry O. Klein III, 1982. Michael E. Sanborn, 1985. Timothy L. Bohan, 1986. Anthony M. Griffin, 1987. Michael C. Davidson, 1988. Sergio A. Fernandez, 1994. Casey Le Legessonet, 1995. Nathan E. Stewart, 2004. Danielle L. Randolph, 2005. Mitchell K. Kuflick, 2011. Michael L. Holland, 2012. Dylan O. Melkin, 2014. Trenton Lloyd Rees, 2019. In honor of all those lost, I will read the poem, The Watch. For years, this sailor has stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, these sailors stood the watch. While some of us were in school learning our trade, these shipmates stood the watch. Even when there were storm clouds of war brewing on the horizons of history, these shipmates stood the watch. Many times they would cast an eye ashore and see their loved ones standing there, needing their guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times, but they still stood the watch. These shipmates stood the watch for us. They stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly and safely each and every night knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today we are here to say, shipmates, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Fallen shipmates, you stand relieved. We have the watch. In honor of those memorialized on this wall, members of the regiment will now perform Amazing Grace. Regiment, hoot and hoot. I now introduce Mr. Jeff Wright, our Director of Alumni Relations for the Eight Bells portion of our ceremony.
On board, timekeeping has been an integral part of shipboard life since the earliest days of long distance navigation. Traditionally, the ship's bell rings every half hour throughout the day, every day. Each half hour, a chime is added until eight bells are reached, signifying the end of a four hour period or watch, at which time the current watch group is relieved and a new group assumes operations. Today, we recognize the end of the watch for our fallen mariners. Would our guests please rise? Regiment, present arms. Regiment, order, arms. Thank you to our band and drill company members and our representative members of the Regiment of Midshipmen for joining us today. This concludes our ceremony. Members of the regiment, regimental operations officer, you may dismiss the regiment.